Hi, John. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Hey, everyone. Um, so, John, I'm very, very interested and in, in very excited about your talk. Uh, I'd love to hear what you've got for us. And um, I'll just take it away. I think uh, we'll be hopefully then have a little bit of time at, uh, afterwards for questions. All right. Sounds great. Let me, let's jump right in here. Um, <clears throat> can everyone see my screen? Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, like Christoph said, uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the future of developer portals in the era of AI and maturing markets. Um, really excited to be here giving this talk today. And uh, I just want to start with a little bit more about myself. As Christoph mentioned, uh, I'm the CEO of a company called Digital Polygon, and we help organizations uh, build their digital experiences online. Uh, outside of work, I think uh, I enjoy not being in front of a computer. Um, <clears throat> and uh, some of my hobbies are hiking and snowboarding and uh, sailing the seven seas. And uh, recently, I was exposed to filter coffee. And uh, it was kind of a life-changing experience a couple months ago. Uh, so uh, something that I've, uh, I've, I've been digging into here. Um, all right, enough about me. Let's, let's dive in. What are we going to talk about today? So uh, I'm going to keep this really simple. I know we've only got about 15 minutes. Uh, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about the history of developer portals and how the advancement of technology uh, has uh, accelerated the need for growth and the expectations that users have for your developer experiences and, and your, your developer portals. I'm going to mainly focus on external developer portals today. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about the expectations of the modern developer portal. And then we're going to talk about looking forward to what the next five years uh, has in store for us with uh, you know the the AI boom that's happening and uh, the continued change of of user expectations. So let's dive right in. Um, the evolution of developer portals. So as technology evolves and has evolved over the last twenty years, so has uh, the uh, technology or uh, the need. Uh, for our teams, our developer teams, our marketing teams to evolve. Um, the competitive landscape is continuing to change. Uh, we're seeing more and more competitors in the market uh, as technology makes entering the market easier to do. We've got a ton more problems that we, we have to solve that we didn't have uh, years ago. We've got increasing and changing user expectations and increasing and changing user personas. And these are kind of the four buckets of, uh, of change uh, that is driving uh, what we're going to talk about today and uh, how our developer programs have to change uh, in this market. So if we go back to the early 2000s, uh, developer portals were really a luxury, right? Developer portals uh, or APIs in general in the early 2000s were just becoming uh, coming into existence. I think Salesforce was released the first API, official API, in, in 2002, and was followed uh, quickly by eBay and Amazon uh, and, and Google. And <clears throat> really, it was, it was focused on larger organizations who um, didn't necessarily need it because uh, they were the only ones in the market. Um, if we fast forward 10 years to the mid to late 2010s, uh, developer portals are required for doing business in the market, right? They've evolved from this pure documentation portal of, I need people to understand how to do this so I can reduce my costs on services to, uh, I'm not even going to have business or someone look at me if I don't have a developer portal. And uh, we've started to increase or, or change the user experience in our portals to provide better customer experiences. And we started integrating things like uh, better navigation, better search functionality, and starting to touch on uh, more interactive documentation uh, and social features. And um, that has continued to evolve since then. I think if we look at the timeframes of this change, um, <clears throat> it's really the first 10 years was pretty slow. Um, if you had APIs and you had products, that was pretty much good enough. And then within the last 
five to eight years, um, that rate of change has been increasing exponentially. And the expectations for anyone coming to market with these new programs um, has has really become uh, a paramount for you to have have these items. So uh, again, I, I know I'm going to rush through some of the early stuff because it's just trying to set a foundation. Let's talk about today's developer portals and what is expected for you today. So in the 2020s, uh, developer portals are table stakes. So developer portals have really, uh, documentation portals in particular, uh, don't even take a product to market without one, I think is kind of the, uh, the trend that we're seeing here. And they've really transformed into immersive hubs for designing and empowering developers to drive collaborations, to showcase platform abilities, and to market products. Um, we've started to integrate AI-driven solutions for personalized experiences, for chatbots, for analytics. Uh, we've increased the emphasis on branding uh, to create distinct identities and, and enhance uh, your brand within this landscape because developers have options, teams have options, companies have options, and you need to build uh, this brand loyalty and brand trust into your applications to drive that forward. And having a, a, a strong and robust developer portal is a signal to your buyers that your company is here to stay, that you're investing in your program, that the APIs that they build the foundations of their company on are not going to disappear next week. Um, and it, it's really become a, a very important part of an organization stack uh, for, for those organizations that are selling APIs and, and, and driving this. So. Um, <laughs> I I want to I want to set the bar first and uh, just talk about the fact that the bar is constantly moving and uh, hitting today's best developer portal uh, is setting the bar for tomorrow, it's like standard. And this rate of change has shifted from every five years to every two years to today. It's really every couple of months that you need to be innovating and releasing new features if you want to stay up with consumer expectations. And this trend is following the rate of advancement of technology. And um, if we look at some of the winners from the dev portals from this year, uh, we're looking at what the bar is for developer portals today. So developer portals today are not just about documentation for your APIs, for your products, um, that, that's, that's table stakes. Today's developer portals are expecting more robust feature sets with onboarding and walkthroughs and tutorials, uh, example codes, interactive guides, and this community and gamification aspect to it to help drive uh, new developers coming into the space, but also to make it uh, a better experience so that developers want to work with your brand, they want to work with your program, uh, and they have an enjoyable experience doing so. And from an experience perspective, uh, the requirements are continuing to increase, right? We need accessibility in our content now. We need engaging visual designs. Uh, otherwise, uh, people aren't going to want to use our docs, and they're not going to have a good experience here. And we want curated user experiences. And all of this together is uh, kind of uh, based on what users expect in, in the world today. And AI is this change and is going to continue to accelerate this change exponentially, uh, which is really the heart of what I want to talk about today. So let's take the, the shift in AI in two, two key buckets. The first is technology, technology advancements are impacting um, the speed at which new tools come to market. So development times are decreasing. Low code and no code solutions are expanding rapidly. Competitors and endpoint solutions are created daily to um, really drive this larger ecosystem of competitors that, that you have to deal with. And the second piece of this is that user expectations and behaviors are changing with the new technology and the new tools and the new behaviors that they're experiencing from others. 
And I think two of the key things that we need to, to pay attention to are that <clears throat> the users are starting to shift from a search mentality of let me go find what I'm looking for, let me go to a website and then dig to let me ask a question and have it handed to me. And uh, that, that is a really important shift in mindset uh, of, of user expectations because it means that you need to be able to bubble up the content uh, that they're looking for uh, when they're looking for it and not make them dig or they'll go to a competitor that that does uh, that does that for them. You know, uh, if if attention spans weren't <laughs> short enough five years ago, uh, that they're even shorter today. And with the technology advancement, with AI uh, driving things to be simpler. Um, well, I could say AI, but uh, it's really technology as a whole making these low-code and no-code solutions uh, more available. Uh, a lot of times, your solutions are becoming less complex. They're becoming easier to use, easier to integrate. And that's shifting the buyer persona of what today's developers look like um, or what today's uh, buyers look like for, for your programs uh, from what they were even two or three years ago. And that's something we need to constantly keep an eye on if we're going to continue to find success in uh, in this market. So, you know, so far we've talked about a little bit about the history of developer portals. We talked about what the expectations are today and some of the impact that AI is having on today's uh, market and and buyer personas. And uh, what I want to talk about is is tomorrow's developer portals and. I think there's three key concepts that, that AI is impacting heavily right now. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about what that's uh, going to do to your programs. So the first is that AI automated document generation is here. Um, this is making code and API documentation trivial. It's automating this process. It's creating a lot of this documentation that developers would have to write uh, in their comments or, or drive forward. And it's going to make this much easier for your teams to put together and drive. Uh, again, this doesn't mean you don't need someone to review it. This doesn't mean that you don't need documentation specialists to help support this. It means that this is going to become easier and take less of your time. And uh, to, to create this really lower level documentation. Um, <clears throat> the second piece is natural language processing chatbots, right? So. Uh, this is going to support the shift of search versus ask. And uh, this chat integration is going to provide you the ability to give users answers directly. It's going to help them troubleshoot issues. It's going to offer them contextual assistance for problems that they have integrating uh, your products. And it's going to provide even coding examples for how they would integrate your products uh, in their specific use case, like this, this contextual code support. And this is going to give you a lot more power and, and user uh, uh, ability to support your users uh, at scale. And the last one I want to talk about is the smart code assistance. And this is going to make the usage and implementation of your, your APIs of your products uh, even simpler. Um, you know, I th I'm sure most people are familiar with the intelligent suggestions and autocomplete and code gen that you see in your IDEs. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how many people have seen uh, an example of an AI agent. So Cognizant had released uh, an AI agent called Devin, and I just was watching uh, some videos of this a couple weeks back, and they had this AI agent that opened up a prompt that actually read through GitHub repositories and documentation and built a fully functioning app integrated with the API and it included everything from understanding how to integrate, getting the keys, and, and driving that forward. And it's it's really going to start supporting uh, organizations for doing the actual integration of your APIs and your products into their tooling. And you know, I think this is still in the early stages, but we're going to see more and more of this come out uh, much faster <laughs> than we might expect uh, in the past because this technology. Uh, technological advancement is increasing so fast. <clears throat> so with that, I want to level set. 
uh, AI doesn't make this magic, right? So AI will accelerate the pace of your documentation and the creation of your content. It will accelerate the increase of competition in your marketplace that you have to deal with. Uh, it'll decrease the complexity of people using it, which will change your buyer personas and allow more and more people to come use these uh, techno these technologies and these solutions. And it will augment your team and enable it to do more uh, with less or more with the same to keep up with it. It will not replace your teams. And I think this is really important for organizations to understand that <clears throat> it's kind of this uh, garbage in, garbage out uh, concept, right? It's not going to replace humans completely. And if you care about quality, you need the human aspect of this. Um, if you want to test this out, go try some prompt engineering. If you write bad prompts, you're going to get bad results. If you write good prompts, you're going to get better results. Um, and this also depends on the quality of your content, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And this is not a magic bullet uh, to do your work and thinking for you. I think uh, a lot of people um, might be thinking they can just let AI drive these things forward. But <clears throat> if you don't understand your content, if you don't understand your product, if you don't understand how people are using it, then how do you validate that your content, and your strategy is correct, right? You need people to think about this and drive it forward, um, at least with, with today's AI. So with that, let's get to how do you move your content forward? How do you move your developer programs forward in this new age of AI? And I think uh, there's, there's two key pieces here. Um, and it all revolves around integrating your developer program with your marketing team. And the first one is investing in your content. So even with this AI augmentation of our work, human interaction is, interaction is still needed um, and it's going to be a big part of the buying process, right? You're still going to have a human that needs to interact with you, that needs to experience your brand and needs to deal with you. And that matters. Um, with so much uh, automation around the code and uh, the documentation around the lower level stuff, your teams can focus more on the complex content, the onboarding, the tutorials, the user experience of uh, your product. And high quality content is extremely important. Um, high, high quality, well structured, uh, scalable content will let you do a number of things. One, it will provide uh, better input for your AI search, for your chatbots, for your <clears throat> for your SEO, for people to find your products. Um, and it will also allow you to scale your content faster, right? Like, I think just like on marketing teams and, and like uh, marketing websites, this two to three year cycle of rebuilds is, is a thing of the past. Uh, you need to be able to iterate and move faster in today's markets. Three to six months is, is probably still a pretty long timeline to make these changes, incorporate new technologies and move things forward. And this is the way that marketers are, are, are working today. And by in it, it, like, bringing in the developer portal into this marketing mindset of continual change, continual innovation, continual improvement. Um, <clears throat> I think you can take advantage of a lot of the newer technology out there and not get left, uh, left behind as your competition uh, increases in the market. And I think the, the last piece here is investing in your brand experience. And I threw some stats on here um, that I think are really important uh, as we continue moving into this world where uh, privacy is making marketing harder, where brand loyalty and trust are continuing to come back to the forefront of, <clears throat> of buying signals. Um, but your brand experience should be extended to your developer portal program if it's not already. And <clears throat> um, this is going to have a huge impact on the success of your program. Uh, you know, 83% of customers agree uh, that trust in a brand makes them more likely to recommend your brand to others. Uh, you know, they, they need to trust the brand to make purchasing decisions. And again, remembering that human interaction and, and humans are involved in this buying process is going to be a key to your success for this as AI continues to, to change the bar and, and change the way that we're moving with this content. And uh, I think that's that's what I want to leave you with on this uh, for this for this talk is, you know, invest heavily in 
brand, invest in content, and leverage these tools to help you move faster. But remember that it, it's not a magic bullet. It shouldn't do all the work for you. And you need uh, to put strategy and thought into your content uh, if you're going to stand out in this uh, ever crowded marketplace uh, as, as more and more solutions uh, tend to come to market. And that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you very much, John.